Let's look at CFI's real estate discounted cash flow model. There are several components to this real estate model. The first is a clear set of assumptions and drivers that will be used to build the model. Based on those assumptions, we can calculate the development schedule. The schedule consists of absorption rates, closings, and timing of costs and expenditures for the project. Based on all of the above, we can then calculate the free cash flow to equity, which is the levered cash flow of the project. That is used to calculate the net present value and internal rate of return of the development. Following that, we can look at the structure of general partners and limited partners and build a cash flow waterfall that will be used to calculate internal rates of return for different investors in the development project. Finally, we'll produce a one-page deal summary or pro forma that can be used to show to investors, lenders, or other parties in the transaction. The purpose of the real estate development model could be several different things. One is to value the development project. Another is to determine how much to pay for a property or how much to spend on building something. We can use it to compare the economics for general partners and limited partners and see if the difference makes sense relative to the risk and effort that goes into the development. It can be used to manage costs for a project. It can have quite detailed cost tracking. It can be used for obtaining financing from a lender, such as a bank or a non-bank institution. And finally, it can be used to assess rates of return for different investor types in the project. In terms of relevant coursework to learn how to build this model, you can start with building a financial model in Excel, then business valuation modeling, and finally, in the real estate financial modeling course, you'll learn how to build every single function and calculation step by step. Let's flip over to the model and take a closer look. Here we are inside the real estate development model. As you can see, we've got a cover page and a table of contents. The first worksheet that follows the cover page contains all of the assumptions. Things like the scheduling dates, property statistics, development costs. All of these assumptions are contained on this worksheet. Then let's flip over to the cash flow model. In the cash flow model, you can see that we've got monthly time periods here and we indicate where the transaction starts, construction begins, and other important milestones along the way. Let's open up each of the sections here that are grouped. When we open them up, we see that there's a section for the revenue buildup, absorption, and actual revenue, then development costs, financing, and finally the levered free cash flow. Here's the internal rate of return of the project. Below that, we have critical information about the GP and LP structure. There are three tiers here of a cash flow waterfall. That all flows through these calculations down here. And finally, we get the internal rate of return for the LP investors, the GP investors, and the overall project. So as you can see, it's a very clean and very well-structured model that's easy to understand and easy to use as a marketing document for raising money, for finding investors, and for understanding the economics of a real estate development project. Let's look at how we might change some assumptions and assess their impact on the output of the model. If we go to the cash flow model, the final output really is the internal rate of return. And we can see what it is right now with the default assumptions in the model. Notice that the LP IRR is 31%. On the deal summary tab, let's assume that the land actually is going to be more expensive. Let's assume that instead of 14 million, it's 16 million. Let's go back over here and we see that the IRR fell from 31% to 21. Let's try to change it again and make it even more expensive. Let's make it 20 million. And then let's see what happens here. And you can see it dropped to below 10%, 6.8. And you'll notice that now they're all the same. There's not different IRRs for LPs, GPs, and the project. The reason is because if we go up to this cash flow waterfall, the first tier is a 10% IRR. So below 10% IRR, everybody's going to be getting the same rate of return. The GPs don't get their enhanced rate of return until they're over and above 10% IRR. So that's an example of how everything would flow through the model.